your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to Glenn in Massachusetts. Hey, Glenn, what's going on? You know what is good for us is Tom O'Brien providing an unbiased source of information for us investors. You don't have an agenda. It's just to cut through everything and to give us the facts. I want to thank you. No, I appreciate it, man. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We have five days a week. We go two hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone had a great day out there, safe day. It's a TGIF Friday, folks. Let's make it a great one. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Learn to ask questions. It is always better to ask questions than to make assumptions. Have the courage to ask questions until you're as clear as you can be. Once you hear the answer to a question, you won't have to make the assumption because you will know the truth. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow up 59, NASDAQ up 14, S&P's up 9, gold contract up $5, trading at $1,417 an ounce. Silver up 81 cents at $35.88. Platinum up $17 at $1,781 an ounce. Copper. Up three and a half pennies at four twenty three a pound. Late sweet crude down two dollars trading at one oh one eighty six. Bonds off three ticks at one twenty oh seven. Dollar index down fifty nine ticks trading out at seventy six sixty seven. Euro up ten ticks at one thirty nine oh six. Yen off a buck ten trading out at eighty one eighty nine. Our phone number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Give us a call, folks. Well, I know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You go back to the February 18th time frame, you were at 1344. We came off that area on the 22nd of February, down with volume. March 1st, down with volume. Yesterday, down with volume. What did it try to do today? It's trying to get back inside the range, having a tough time doing it. We got to 1308. We closed out at 1304. You do 900 million versus the 1.1 on the way down. That now is on your daily. We take a look at the SPY and we put that up on the weekly. What you have here is this, folks, is that when we take the SPY on the weekly, first off is that you made your high the week of February 18th. You did that on 591 million. You came off that high with 863 million. We tested that low out here this week with $1 billion. Bottom line, the forces downtown. Dow Industrials, we take a look at the Dow. What we have with the Dow is this. Dow goes up 59 bucks today. Inside the Dow, what we had done is this. We, we got into the price point of 11936 rejects that level, closes out at 12024 Now, check it out. So inside the Dow, what was the force? What was bringing it up today? You had Caterpillar, 3M, Chevron, and Exxon. So let's start with Caterpillar. We go take a look at the cat. What is the cat doing out there? What the cat did is this. She had already came off the highs with volume. She's still consolidating. Yesterday, doesn't it, you know, she's going to have a tough time uh, getting back inside 101.80. Right now we're at 100.02. We go to 3M. We take a look at 3M. 3M had a tough day yesterday. What does it do? Takes back a buck sixty. It's not going to be good enough. Why? We went up there on 3.4 million. You were going against 5.3 million. Chevron. What you had the oil sector, oil sector out here. We had Chevron go up 85 cents. A little bit different now because what Chevron had done, it come back into a breakout area. That breakout area. Had the 15 million, came back with 6 million, rejected it. That's on the bullish side. On the bearish side, she's going to have a tough time getting over 101.48. ExxonMobil. We do it ExxonMobil. Same type of setup. ExxonMobil came into the breakout area. It had light of volume. You know, we'll see whether she can get back inside this 81, 82, 89 area. Composite, NASDAQ composite. We take a look at the composite. 
what the composite did out here is this. Composite's in tough shape. Uh, composite did uh, 1.8 billion versus 2.3. That little baby is, um, you know, if we take a look at the composite, we hit uh, 26.89 out here today. Uh, that means the composite is, has been back, is back, uh, going all the way back to uh, January 20th. Uh, we we're still under the swing point uh, from the first leg down where the gap was. We had gap down from uh, 2840. Um, bottom line is that this composite, I suspect, you know, can it get into the gap from the gap way? Yes, the, yeah, I can. It looks to me like though it did the work that it was trying to do. And what that was trying to do with folks is this. See, we had come downtown on March 7th. That low is 27, 24.51. Well, you know where we go today, folks? 27, 24.61, and it gives it up. Hits it, and as it hits that level, bottom line, it's Skadoo's coming right down the other side. And when you take a look at that structure out there, uh, what you have is that we did 2.2 billion shares on the 7th. We did 1.8 coming into it, and it couldn't handle it. Gold contracts. We go over to gold. We take a look at gold. What we had with gold out here, had a price spread out here today of 1404 to 1424. You close this uh, session out at the 14, 16.90. Now, gold tested the 1434 price point going back from the December 7th. Tested it with 50,000 lighter contracts. Couldn't handle it. Comes off that yesterday. Going downtown, I believe we did 171,000 contracts. Yeah, we did. Actually, we did 200,000 contracts. You go sideways today with 57. That's on your daily basis. If we turn around, we put this on a continuous contract. What you have is this. We put it on a weekly. What you're going to have is this: is that she got over all the highs, meaning the 1432, the 1424, the 1424. By the way, folks, was the high of November. The 14. 31 was the high of December. The 1424 was the high of January, and she closed underneath it on a weekly. What that says is that she wants to pull back into the 1352 area. Bonds, we go to the bond. Well, actually, let's go to the dollar. dollar what the dollar did out here is this. Dollar index out here today. She, wild day, no doubt. She gets to a price point of 77.55. Over the highs of yesterday, pulls back, pulls back dramatically, pulls back, gives back everything that she had yesterday. But watch how this baby is doing it, folks. Um, yesterday, we had uh, 36,000 contracts. Now, she got over the high of today, had 14,000 contracts. Pulls back into the low of yesterday, 14,000. Now, this is where this gets dicey, and this is what it is. You got over a high, and you get into the low of yesterday. So it's like, okay, have you gone higher with lighter volume or have you pushed into the low with lighter volume? Well, when you have a heads up like that, it's done both. You, what you do, if I go into a continuous contract, what you're going to see is that on a weekly basis, what we've done is that we've just broken, nah, it's a close call whether we, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, it's, gonna, it's a close call whether we've broken the downtrend from the uh, 78 98 area. My take is that that's where it wants to go, but um, you know, we'll see where that shakes and bakes. Now, what was that all about? Well, bottom line, you know, bottom line is that when markets go down, markets go up, you, they're either buying or they're selling. And what they're doing out here today is that they're selling. Now, um, what we had happen in uh, Japan last night, unfortunately, was a huge earthquake. Uh, one of the biggest earthquakes ever. And you know what's amazing about that? If you remember, K. Rico had called us from Costa Rica. And uh, when he called, he was saying that yeah, in, 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 in Chile they had this huge earthquake that was very deep. And he was saying that, you know, that that is uh, a forebearer that, you know, things aren't quite right underneath. Well, bottom line is that uh, when that happened this morning, it was like, man, this is wild. Anyway, so let's go back to the EK for a second. So what you had is that you had the yen um, basically uh, get much stronger. And the reason that it got much stronger, of course, is that they're buying more yen um the yen went from a price point out here today of about 8330 to 8188. Now, what that is going to do, folks, is this. I suspect the yen's gonna hold, meaning, yeah, I can get a little bit lower, but the yen is already in an uptrend. The Nikkei, if we go over to the Nikkei, what you want to watch is this. 
Now, the Nikkei came down and came down hard. It came down 179 points. The volume exploded out of the Nikkei. We did 2.3 billion. That's after making a high up there of 1.7. Unfortunately, what you're going to see here is this. The Nikkei is going to blast through this 10,182, I suspect Sunday night. It wants to get into even 9,600. Now, keep your eye on it, folks, okay? Because what you have is that this is going to set up a buy on the Nikkei. You, you, you know, when we're talking about the Nikkei, you want to get into the Nikkei. Now, the craziest thing about this, of course, is that it's uh, a huge problem, you know, because people died. I mean, the destruction is terrible, you know, but you're going to see how this sets up. It's setting up a buy in the Nikkei, and that's what the correction is. And you never know what these, where or why these corrections come in. But bottom line, that is how that is set up. Let's go to uh, Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Hey, Tom, you having a great day out there? I am, man. Ready for a good weekend? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. There Clear blue sky, 65 degrees. It's another Chamber of Commerce day here it, in Clearwater. It certainly is, man. What are we going to look hey, at? I was, uh, now that we're finally having, it looks to be like a real deal pullback. i um, been waiting very patiently to try and take a position on Verizon. I was curious for your thoughts, please. Okay, let's take a look. We have Verizon Communication. The low is 24, the high is 37, they pay a 5.5% uh, dividend. Uh, that little baby, okay, so she has, she come off the high, 37. She looks good up there, interesting. Oh, boy, so it's like, okay, you want to let her test 34.36. Right now we're at 35.85. Let me pull this back a little bit more. Zero. It, it looks like it's building cost to do something, Tom. It's been consolidating for a while now. Yeah, it is, man. I right, listen, man. And we do. You know what you can do too? You can scale into this, man, because this wants to go to thirty-seven again. You got to the, the buy. The buy here, Dave, is thirty-three sixty-eight. And where I'm going with this is the week of the tenth, uh, the week of the eighth of April, of October. You can see you, 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 the 116 million shares there. Let it come into that. If it comes into it with lighter shares, rejects it, that's the buy. If that comes into it with heavy volume, then just stay away from it because then you're going to really get it cheap. You're going to get it at 28 bucks, man. Well, let's say it comes in with heavy volume. Would you short it at that point? No, no, because it's a buy. Okay. You see, this, okay. Is, this, is, this is a buy. So you just let it come all the way down the other end. You just sit there and say, okay, baby. You know, See, what, what ends up happening... And large corrections, you know, I, I, if this is going to be the large correction, is that even the good stocks will get way overextended, but you'll see the volume dry up, but price destruction will happen in them. And then when it's over, though, the snapback is dramatically in them. Awesome. Tom, can I ask you one more, please? Yep. You just stay right there. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We had the Dow finish up. 59, NASDAQ up 14, S&P's up 9. We're going to be right back, folks.